Hey guys, welcome to lesson 5. In this lesson, we are going to begin designing the characters. We've already talked about references and history. We've also seen some key concepts when designing pirates. Now, we are going to follow some guidelines to design our characters. So, let's begin with Francois Lonet. I think I told you about him before. If you remember, he was a pirate who did a lot of raids on the sea. I'm taking inspiration from the common stereotype of a Frenchman. A thin nose, an expression denoting cleverness and knowledge and a long curly hair. And as I told you in previous lessons, I'll use those common pirate elements to portray this character the best I can. Well, guys, the pose may vary, and I could try drawing various sketches, but I'd rather can work without having to erase much. I know that mistakes are inevitable, but I'd like to avoid making corrections that might change the personality of the character. You can notice how arrogant he looks, right? This is the look I'm looking for. Of course, I'm not forgetting about the common elements that I was talking before, such as the sword. As you can see, I'm drawing him as a thin character with a condescending pose. I also want him to look like he's nimble, so I'm looking for a dynamic pose too. For example, I'm drawing him leaning on one leg, and this will be the result. I think I'm happy with this sketch, so I'll move on to the second character, Anne Bunny. This will be our female pirate, so let's see how we can draw her. History says that she was Irish but I wanted to depict her like if she was from the Caribbean. Even though I'll be following the usual pirate elements, I'll make some changes to suit my needs and give her a better look. For example, making her look vicious fits with the descriptions of her. Remember, guys, that she was a ruthless pirate. So, we need to make her look like she's the leader of her ship. That's why I'm going to draw her as a strong character with a solid pose. I'm going to exaggerate her hip soon. Besides, as we need to put the sword somewhere, I'm going to draw it over the, her shoulder. This way she'll look very confident. Guys, take a look at the shape of the arm. And remember also what I said about erasing as little as I can. This encourages creativity and being confident in what you are drawing. As I always say, don't be afraid of making mistakes. Mistakes are welcome. If you need to erase something a thousand times, do it. You don't have to draw exactly as I do. I decided to skip the part in which I should be drawing different poses because I was already sure about what I wanted. In case you still don't know what you want, look for references on the internet so that you can draw your characters mimicking the poses on those references 
or even reinterpreting them. Or you can also do like me and dive head first into the pool. Don't worry about it. Nobody will complain about your drawing di directly. And no one will kill you about it, so don't worry. Let's continue with the last character, Blackbird. Obviously, I'll add a bird and a gold tooth. I, I'll also draw the hat, which is something that fits his description. As the previous characters didn't have an eye patch, I'll add one to Blackbird. However, I'm not convinced about this. See, I have to take back what I said before and erase this because I don't like it at all. Sorry for that. Okay, let's give this a second try. Not good again, so third time's a charm. I think I'm going to try something different for Blackbird. In fact, he's going to be Bluebird. I guess you knew the story, right? I draw him as a small, chubby person. I'll also add the bird and he will be laughing, like if there's nothing to be afraid of. And the hook will reinforce the personality of this character. What's left is the custom. If you don't know much about it, about how to do the custom and so on, maybe because of the old historic context, because we are not very familiar with these kinds of characters, you can try looking for references. As I always say, they are very, very useful. I know that I've mentioned this before, but it's very useful. For example, I'm using my references to draw the boots and the jacket, among other things. As I said before, we're not looking for an aggressive look on our characters. We are focusing on a young audience. So you need to have that in mind. Don't forget that. And this will be the result. Now, let's prepare the file for using it in Illustrator, where we are going to color the illustration. I would also like to mention that the brush I used for these sketches in Photoshop is a traditional pencil one. To prepare the file, what I did is import it and then I embedded it into the artboard and then I lowered the opacity. After that, I created a new layer below it and I applied a dark color to it. This way it will be easier for us to see the tones of our illustration and we would be ready to start coloring. Don't forget to lower the opacity, that's very important. See you in the next lesson. Bye!